Well, thank you very much for um, the invitation. <coughs> and um, I'm happy to give the talk here at uh, a place called the Living Art Museum. Um, this is really nice, and I hope it goes for some a, a living uh, art discussion later on. Um, I feel really at home here. This reminds me a lot of Overgaden in many ways, both the uh, interior, the architecture, certainly also the temperature. Um, so uh, let me just find the right papers, all the notes from a great weekend. Here we are. It's a little spread all over there because there are quite a few things that um, have been said during the weekend that would be nice to um, touch upon. We'll see, uh, maybe I'll be able to do it during my little presentation, otherwise we can um, take it up later and uh, maybe even later on at the reception in a more informal way. <clears throat> there, was, there was a note somebody was saying yesterday how funding makes you lazy. Um, and I can assure you that is not the case where I come from. Um, uh, and it hasn't been for all the years that uh, Oregon has um, existed. Oregon uh, was founded uh, in 1986 for almost 25 years, almost 25 years ago. It's uh, located in uh, central Copenhagen. This is the facade. You can read more on the website. Um, and it's somewhere between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Christiania uh, in the local area of, of Christianshavn. It occupies about uh, 700 square meters um, on two floors of this old building. It used to be a, a printer's workshop. Um, and it was founded by a group of local um, artists, I suppose, as an alternative to the existing um, structures for, for exhibiting of, of contemporary art. And in those days, that would have been mainly the uh, museums. As has been the case um, elsewhere, the contemporary art world in Copenhagen has developed considerably over the last 10, 15 years. Um, <clears throat> and there wasn't the same, well, there wasn't the same attention to contemporary art, I suppose, but also there wasn't the, the infrastructure of the commercial um, art scene, for instance, that we see today. Um, so these artists, they, um, they uh, convinced the Ministry of Culture that it was a good idea with this space. Um, and uh, it was then named over again the Exhibition Hall for the Ministry of Culture for Contemporary Art, I think. Um, it's a long, long title. And uh, the affiliation with the ministry basically meant that um, they would take care of very basic costs for rent and heating, and that was more or less it. Um, there was a voluntary group of um, sort of three-person artist board, uh, a, a sort of running board, um, who would uh, look after the space. They were not there to exhibit themselves, but to exhibit the work of um, their colleagues, as it were. Because what is central to Overgaan, and that remains today, is the, um, the, the system or, or the possibility of handing in a submission, an exhibition proposals. Um, so these three, um, the three artists who would be on the board at any one time, once a year, they would go through a big pile of envelopes with uh, good ideas and maybe not so good ideas, but they would sift through all these uh, exhibition proposals and out of this um, material, they would make up the exhibition program for the following year. <clears throat> um, and so uh, it was very much a part of the identity of the space that it was artist run and uh, that, that you had these sub submissions, there was no staff, there was hardly any architecture because it's full of windows, lot of, lots of false walls have been put in but apart from that there was, there was not the reception area that there is today uh, and, and other things. Uh, artists had to invigilate their own exhibitions. So it was really a, very much a, a DIY experience um, that you got allocated um, a, a period of time um, for, um, for your show, and you'd be in charge of it yourself, produce it yourself as an artist, and then come and, uh, and, um, and, and look after it yourself. <clears throat> now, this, this um, principle of accessibility, it was uh, pushed quite far um, in that 
in, in, in the beginning of, of Overgaden, um, um, it was an, it was it was a, it was a principle that it had to be the, uh, to the benefit of, of as many people as possible somehow. So at some point I've been going through the archive a bit, and at some point they, there was uh, three exhibitions at any one time, one on the ground floor and two on the on the first floor, and the exhibition periods would last like five weeks. So that would make at least sort of 24 exhibitions a year. Uh, which um, was a way of, of making this um, open to as many um, artists um, as possible. I'm going to make a little sort of artificial division between then and now. Of course, uh, that will leave out many details, but that's going to, uh, today's uh, time slot doesn't allow for all this. Um, but, but this is a little bit about the, the history, and I'll then come to, to what it looks like today and what the structure is like today, because that has changed um, quite a lot maybe in similar ways to other uh, art spaces and art institutions um, that you're familiar with. Um, but it's interesting to go through um, the, the, the archive of Oregon because you realize that um, because of this openness and accessibility and the extreme amount of exhibitions that they would go through, many, most, many of them, or most maybe Danish artists that, that you would know of a certain generation will have uh, been there and I was having a conversation with uh, uh, Olafur Gislason, who also told me that he's been exhibiting there at some point, and maybe uh, other uh, people in, in the audience will be familiar with the space from the inside um, as well. And, and um, <clears throat> so, um, and, and also I, I can add on a personal note, this is where I did my first uh, my first exhibition as a curator in the summer of 99 because I applied as you could with um, an exhibition proposal and which was accepted and I spent the whole summer of 99 on the windowsill on the ground floor uh, looking after the works of Jens Harning and Seal Floyer and other people who happened to be in this group show that I, that I curated. Um, <clears throat> So this was a little on, on the history. I um, have been working there now as, as the artistic director, as it's called. It's also the director of in many other areas. <laughs> um, um, I've been working there since 2006, a little more than four years now. Um, I have a curatorial background and not an artistic background. And um, when I started working there, I suppose that was one of the visible changes of a different structure. And as I said, it has developed over a long period, but uh, for the sake of simplicity, we'll do it sort of before and after. Um, <clears throat> and it was the then board who um, decided uh, to, um, I suppose you could call it, professionalize the, the, the institution. Um, the three artists or the artists that had been on the board previously had been representing different fractions of, of, the, of the Danish art world, uh, the Academy Council or the Artists' Union. And it was, there was a more kind of unified uh, vision maybe uh, or, or profile for the, for the space that was, um, that was um, required or wanted. Um, so they also set up a position of um, director for this space. It had that was very much a, uh, different to the, to, the, to the outset, where it was this non-hierarchical, very kind of, almost like a grassroots uh, um, a way of, of leading um, an institution. Now, uh, it resembles many other institutions, also as an artist run, so with this fairly hierarchical uh, structure. The, um, and um, I'll, I'll return to that in a little bit. When I started, <clears throat> in uh, 2006, we had a few, um, there was, I had two. There was the, the program that was uh, planned by my predecessor uh, in the job. And then we did a three week um, project called 21 Days, 21 Years. And it was a three week, it was, yeah, there was 21 days uh, looking at the past, looking at the, the past of, of the institution really in order to remind um, both ourselves and uh, for me to have a possibility of digging into the archive and the history of the space, but also to remind the audience of Copenhagen what an art space could be. 
I wouldn't say that there's very much sort of institutional um, discourse uh, in Copenhagen. And, and it was um, exciting to, to try this out as a kind of festival format on these three weeks and to, to, um, to test that a bit. And it was also... Um, 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 yeah, look, look into the, to the history of what organ has been, which kind of space. So here you see um, a panel discussion, apart from the exhibitions we do, there's a very strong and, and extensive program of, of seminars. Um, more of that here. We commissioned an artist, um, Christina Esk, to, um, to uh, make a, a spatial situation out of the, out of the archive. Um, there was this spa, there was a, a, a funny exhibition space that I wanted to tear down, and so we handed it over to some uh, students at the academy who could use it and paint it and tear it down and make holes in the walls. They could do whatever, and it was the spa that evolved over the last, over the three weeks uh, in various forms. We had artists and, uh, and ourselves cooking, um, sort of underlined the, the space as this sort of social space. There was discussion, there was sort of all sorts of um, things happening in those three weeks. There was a theatre play uh, where the setting, the, the theatre props were made by artists that we then showed. There was a TV station, this TV TV that was mentioned yesterday. We had an internet uh, uh, service which has now become this, what is called Kunsten Nu. Um, and there was a, it, the, the TV station also had a TV studio. Um, and so on and so forth. And that kind of marks the change now. We're coming into the, to the now, in a way. Um, <clears throat> because now the, the, the I'd say the um, structure has changed considerably, as I was um, um, implying. I'm now working there as a full-time director, there's uh, two other people on, on the staff, and then two more um, people by the city. So it's still a fairly small staff compared to the big um, space and its, and its program. And what has happened is that it's been, uh, I suppose you could say, professionalized, uh, the institution, uh, and now we behave um, uh, very much uh, like a state-run uh, place because um, we, um, we receive... Um, all of the funding, uh, or almost all of the funding from, from the Arts Council. In a way, this, the, this, the same money that was uh, from the Ministry of Culture before, we now ap apply from it. Still sort of the sort of public money or taxpayers' uh, money, I suppose. Um, now we're just what we call an independent institution, but of course we're not independent in, in, in any way. Um, and I'm happy to tell you that uh, there's still, we still have the arms length principle in the, uh, at work in, in Denmark. It's still experts who, or, or people who, um, who, who are artists or artist or whatever, who decide on the, on the funding um, in Denmark. Um, and, um, and, and the funding that we receive is sort of sufficient for running... Um, for, for, for the running cost, not for the production. And this will log into what uh, Judith was um, talking about earlier today. And we are one of those institutions that don't produce a thing. We uh, host um, the exhibitions um, on, on show the, the, in, in the budget as it is now. There's money to, um, uh, to keep the building open, to turn on the light, to have it fairly clean to have the, the staff there. Uh, um, then, in a way, you could say the artists who exhibit there, they have to fundraise themselves. So it's only the very brave artists uh, and curators who apply for an exhibition at Overgen because when they get the go-ahead, and we usually plan about a year in advance, they have to start um, finding some money. And of course, I mean, it doesn't, it's not so important to, to me if they find it in the mattress or if they rob a bank or if they apply to the Arts Council. Uh, they mostly apply to the Arts Council. <laughs> um, and um, <clears throat> for, for one of these uh, production grants. And 
so that's how we're very dependent on on on, on their um, ability to to secure some funds for their shows. Um, I'll just with my I'll, I'll try to do what uh, Bertha was doing was doing before a little bit of simultaneous work here. Um, I'm not going to say much to each of the different exhibitions, but it will give you a sense of of what. Um, uh, what type of exhibitions there have been in the last few years. So this is sort of chronological, but really only a little selection of, of the shows that have been at Oregon. Um, as you will see, we focus mostly, mostly on um, solo shows. Um, it's really a place where, and at the moment we now have, I forgot to say, we only have nine exhibitions a year, which is very different than, than, than the 24 um, in, the, in the mid 80s. And uh, this has been a conscious decision in order to do more for, the, for each um, exhibition. But rather than getting as many as possible through the space, we thought it was more important to work with the different exhibitions. And we do sort of press work and, um, and, uh, and we do this uh, leaflet as well, which I'm just... I've got a bag full of advertising. <laughs> so let's just see. So this is <laughs> looking a little official. There's no winner. Uh, or maybe you'll be the winner. I brought some of the invitations. We have um, two openings uh, uh, on Friday, this coming Friday. And what we put our energy into uh, um, is also to produce these sheets. that They work as um, exhibition invitations. But we also do with the artists we do, um, um, there'll be interviews or essays or find ways to um, communicate um, um, their projects. What's important at Oregon is that I would say the exhibitions and the projects, they are very much on the artist's terms, especially because, I mean, they bring the money to, <laughs> and they bring the, 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 the exhibitions. Um, it's not a curated space in the sense of other um, spaces, but it's more, um, I'd still say that, that the exhibitions um, there, um, they, they come very much from, from the artists. The artists, they have a desire to realize something there, and this is what brings the whole um, process about. But I brought extras of these so you can have um, a look at them. We're going to open a fantastic show, I think, on Friday with Danish artist Henrietta Heise. Uh, uh, downstairs and upstairs with um, Helen de Mine and my hair here. There's more here for you to have a look at. <clears throat> Yuri was saying something, I think it was her, she was talking about what is the use for this um, term, uh, the alternative, and uh, um, I, don't know, I think it was Ma Maria Lind, she um, brought up Peter Sheldell's article where she talked about, or he talks about uh, the alternative versus um, the parallel. And I suppose you could say that uh, Organ is also a parallel uh, institution to the other institutions that some of which uh, um, Annette lined up yesterday. But Judy was also saying something about instead of the word alternative, maybe you can use, uh, you can use specialized. Um, as oh, that's how I heard it anyway, because I thought that would that would um, sit quite well with what we're trying to do at Oregon. That it's a place that um, specialises in developing uh, or, or hosting, giving space literally um, uh, to to artists to um, show the projects that there might not be um, a space for sort of elsewhere. Um, I think maybe you could say. Um, that um, that previously, because it was so it was so open and and, and accessible to to everybody, and, and there were so many exhibitions. Maybe it's not completely fair, but I think there was a sense uh, that if you couldn't get a show at a I don't know a smart gallery, maybe or uh, um, in Berlin or wherever, then you, there was always organs to sort of count on, um, and. And um, this is different now. Now, uh, we also want to be an alternative to Berlin, I suppose, or we also want to be, we, we're sort of part of uh, this in a, in, a, um, in, a different, in a different way. 
um, the, 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 the sort of art, art food, art chain. Um, it's still a place that will show um, uh, younger emerging artists, but also, but also um, more established uh, artists where you could say it's more, how many have we still got? Um, Mid-career, not surveys, but, but, uh, but uh, artists by, who are more established. And this is important to me that it's not only a sort of a nest or a greenhouse for young artists, it's also a space um, that I'm happy also attracts applications from more established artists who will be able to do things there um, which they won't uh, maybe in, in, in more in, in other kinds of institutions and in museum spaces, for instance. It's also a place where we have like this one, uh, artist curated uh, exhibition. And in general, I would say it's a place where you can, um, as an artist or a curator, try out other formats um, that don't have to um, live up to, um, say, um, recognizability or um, the art market uh, or um, um, other such um, things. So Orgaden, in a way, is a very privileged um, and very established alternative. Um, privileged because of um, the funding situation. It's a joker or, uh, on the Danish art scene, or it has a very particular um, place in the, in the um, support system. We're very um, aware of this, and we also, when I say established, it's also because it's been around for almost 25 years now. Um, and um, so you can say that we're both, we're both trying to sort of play with, with the, the, big, the, big, the other big institutions, the other big Kunsthalle in, in, uh, in Copenhagen, um, which um, was mentioned yesterday. But, but we also, it's also very important for us to to, um, we were trying to have it both ways, supposed to be one of these established Kunsthalle places in Copenhagen um, and do things together with um, them. Let's see more material in the back. We did uh, this folder recently together, the five of us, um, to establish this and to, to put some attention to the work that's been done by the non-commercial um, art spaces. Um, a stack, but also we're interested in the um, in the um, sort of um, emerging art scene or, or the the yeah un, unestablished um, structures, and, and think us very much as as um, as part of that. We hope that artists will come and do th I think that artists will come and do things and projects at over again, which they wouldn't be um, um, which wouldn't maybe be be possible uh, um, in other places. And um, yeah, there's another solo show. So I suppose now <clears throat> um, it, the, the, there's a bigger variety of um, of uh, art spaces around, a contemporary art space around, than when Overgaen was um, was um, founded. Um, but I hope that we are still, or I think that we, it's, 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 I don't know this word alternative, but another option, if you like, or it's a particular route um, to go down. It's, a, it's a, to, to exhibit at our again and um, a privilege for, 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 for the artists and, and curators who, um, who will do this. It's, it's so exciting to be working there and to see how ambitious and, uh, um, and um, what is the word? I don't know, but to see how the artists go about to have this possibility uh, on, a, on um, an art scene that might be more uh, also dominated at least by, by the commercial side or the other more the, the museum uh, um, institutions. Um, and it's great to see how they pick up the glove of, you know, it's, it's up to them really without um, the artists and the applications and, the, and, and their energy. There's very little for, for us to deal with. Um, so it, it really comes comes down to, to them in the end, and it's for them. Now, <clears throat> I was saying that um, 
that um, uh, we were very privileged because of the funding situation. Um, and um, we managed to um, go from a one year um, uh, agreement, if you like, or applying for one year grants to uh, lately um, receiving um, a grant for three years at the time from this subcommittee from the, uh, from the Arts Council. This committee changes every four years. So now we have to sort of renegotiate. And of course, there are, um, in, in Denmark as uh, elsewhere, there are winds in, in the funding uh, area, there are winds blowing in terms of uh, educational activities and uh, in increasing demands for uh, could be attendance numbers or um, additional fundraising, what you do for special um, groups. Um, we're not, um, um, it, it's not, we don't have a, uh, an agreement where we are uh, required to go up, say, 10%. But it's definitely something that we will be dealing with um, a lot in the future. So um, our uh, sort of ambitions for the future, I should think, or I would say, is um, um, hopefully will be it'll be a more uh, international um, program. Um, the reason why most, or one thing is that you see that it's mostly uh, Danish artists exhibiting here. It has also played this important uh, role on the Danish uh, art scene, and that com comes back to the to the funding structure that we talked about earlier. How uh, it's hard to get uh, funding for for foreign artists uh, working in in Denmark, whereas the Danish artists they are, can they're eligible to apply for the production grants. So this is what we would like, um, and also, um, um, of course, we would like to have. Um, uh, to to um, to continue working um, uh, closely with the artists and, and on their terms, but we would like then to find a way um, to to um, um, keep the being this privileged uh, and and uh, um, uh, space. Um, so work with um, some of these. Um, um, I suppose in increasing uh, um, um, demands, uh, but in a way um, uh, where we can find a way to do it, where by not sort of imitating other institutions, um, but finding a way where um, uh, you can still sort of secure a diversity in the possibility for for the for the artist on the. Uh, you know, on the scene in, in Copenhagen today. And I think I'll stop here for now. <laughs>